Welcome to the new episode of Start AD Studio. Today we have with us Gabriel uh, from Kibi. Uh, Gabriel just recently graduated from a scale up two program and uh, Gabriel's startup Kibi is working on a decentralized loyalty ecosystem. Gabriel, it's best you, if you introduce your startup and then you can start, start with the questions. Cool. Thanks a lot, Debbie, for, for having us here. And uh, we're, we're super grateful that we had the chance to be part of the scale up program. Um, what we're doing at Kiwi is uh, we're uh, offering a B2B rewards marketplace um, uh, for brands uh, to connect their loyalty program with each other, enable their customers, and enable the customers to exchange um, rewards um, for one another. Um, this uh, we're doing this this really successfully with a few um, large airlines um, and um, and other brands. So uh, we're very happy that we. We're able to expand it uh, into the UAE with scale up. So Gabriel, this is a very unique sort of an idea, it's a unique sort of a solution. What what got you started on something like this? Like even visualizing that companies have their own loyalty programs and customers are not able to see that kind of value unless until they are able to exchange on it. So what exactly clicked? What made you think that okay, this is something we can do? I mean, this was uh, this was really a journey in the process. So it wasn't um, a straightforward uh, waking up in the morning and saying this is the idea. But it was really um, talking with a lot of different brands, making a lot of different tests, um, uh, uh, product tests, and, and 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 really experimenting a lot, getting data, and seeing okay, this is the direction that we, that we have to go. There were of course some some let's say pivotal moment where we had certain meetings and you had like that light bulb going on. So that there were a few of these uh, of these um, meetings. But it really is a journey, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't just uh, happen in in, uh, uh, in a week or two. But uh, it's really a journey that goes over year over years and years. So, as background to this, were you working on some something some something of a similar project, and then you thought, okay, you know, this this is an additional new thing that I can straight away jump on. What was the background before this? So we we always worked uh, in in loyalty, and before we we built the the rewards marketplace, we basically had our own um, loyalty program in Switzerland um, with with different brands like Burger King, Subway, and around hundred thousand users, and. What we saw is that the bigger the brands were getting, the more they wanted their own thing. And uh, and we really saw that, let's say, connecting the whole loyalty market on an application layer is very difficult because everybody wants to have their own relationship with the customer, wants to customize the front end and the user experience. So that one loyalty program for everybody, that will be very difficult. But one infrastructure for the whole loyalty market that works and that's what we wanted to focus on okay so as a career path what were you always like one day i will be an entrepreneur it happened naturally you know you you started making choices which one day led to kiwi getting founded i mean my brother and i um we co-founded kiwi together we both um come out from a let's say entrepreneurial uh, background so our parents they both um built their own company and uh and, and we were really part of so I was born one year after their company was born. So basically, Januga and I grew with the company and we really saw, um, let's say, a huge um, a huge part of that journey was done with us together. So we saw, we went with, in business meetings, we went to do business journeys. Um, so it was very early to learn that part. And it was, we didn't know anything else. You know what I mean? Like for us, it was, that was the normal life. And so for us, it was also clear, okay, we want to be entrepreneurs like our parents. And uh, and of course, you have quite a bit of freedom when you see what you can do as an entrepreneur. You can work everywhere. Um, I mean, we always, my parents always connected uh, vacations and business meetings. So for us, it was like normal. You can have fun, but you can also um, have business uh, at the same time. So uh, that was honestly the biggest inspiration to um to go in this direction and what is it like being an entrepreneur so what kind of challenges do you face every day and what is the what is that price at the end of the day you're like okay you know what was worth it it was a very strong it was a very hectic day but was worth it yeah i mean yeah i mean I, yeah it's a good question <laughs> at the end of the day i think that one part is for sure the self-fulfillment so you wouldn't do this and you you couldn't do all the ups and downs if you if if the work doesn't fulfill you in that sense so I think it's a very it has to be a very intrinsic um, motivation in that sense because if you just think about the reward and let's say about the money and what you can do, you won't have the the, the willpower to go through all the up and downs. 
Um, so first, it, it, it really has to be self-fulfilling for someone. So if you wake up in the morning and if you wake up to uh, work until late in the evening, it's because it fulfills you and you like to do it. That's the first part. Second part is really, of course, when we look at our mission, we know that doing the doing the right job, we can create a huge amount of value for this world. And that really is something very rewarding that we know, okay, as the longer we're pushing forward, the more we're pushing forward, um, the higher the probability that we can uh, achieve our mission and really unlock a huge amount of value for the whole world. When COVID happened, the, the way the consumer spending money was a little bit different than it was it is now. And so how is how's the COVID and the entire world moving online has impacted your business, you know, in terms of con- consumer spending, in terms of consumer behavior, in terms of choices they make on the digital world and the physical world? So what we saw for sure, I mean, um, and there was like everybody saw it, of course, everything retail where you had to go out and you had to go to the store um, was was basically the, the one most affected in the, in the last two years where we also really saw our customers delaying their launches because they just didn't open their stores and it was still on lockdown. So that was one part. The other part was really that, of course, it changed completely because just with the home office, people were spending a huge amount of time at home. Um, in general, ev- since everything was closed, basically from sports to food to entertainment uh, to gastronomy, everything went went basically home. So a lot of customers had to think about, hey, how are we actually bringing the experience to the customers um, uh, at home, and um, and basically reinvent themselves. And we see a f- we saw a few customers that did that quite well. Um, that that said, you know what, we have to change how we're actually offering our products because COVID is just uh, uh, is just making a huge change. And there were other customers that were pretty strict and said, you know what, we'll just wait until it's over and then we do business as as usual. So you always see a bit depending on the on the customer how they changed. One thing that they had all in common is loyalty was crucial for them because exactly in in, in in cases like COVID, um, where where customers are super uncertain, there is a lot of uh, a lot of let's say let's say fear and and, and doubt in in the air and and in the in the market. People want to have stability, and so the brands that you know, the brands uh, where you know you get a certain quality, those are exactly the brands that you will stick to it. So loyalty, we saw that in COVID was more important than ever to actually um, be able to survive uh, this period of time for certain brands. So you mentioned uh, talking to a lot of corporates and getting with the corporates. So how is it different, you know, uh, sort of connecting with these corporates through an accelerator program model versus, you know, um, having a direct engagement, reaching out to them on your own personally. So how is it different? I mean, um, it's it's for sure super, uh, super structured. So what is very good is the customer um, that you want to talk to, the enterprise that you want to talk to, they actually start a conversation with you and they know exactly what is going on in the next uh, three, four week. They have been prepared by the accelerators. Like in, in your case, the customers knew exactly there is a customer discovery call coming. There is a tech deep dive coming. So they were prepared and it wasn't a surprise where you have the first discussion with the customer. And then you have to kind of do customer discovery without telling him maybe because it's just part of your process and you're calling it demo. So that was that was very, very well to really see, okay, the structured process, how it works, um, that the brands were prepared. The setup that we had with the champions that really, really were um, were focused on helping us basically doing a deal with, with their company, that helped a lot because, of course, you get insights and you get support that otherwise, if, if you do it in a direct approach, it's much more difficult to get. Um, so that was, uh, I think that was the, one of the main differences. And of course, all the coaching, all the support that we, that we received uh, from the scale up team, for example, um, that's also super invaluable because at the end of the day, um, they, they support you throughout the whole journey. Um, they know the customers, they work with them since months on building up this, uh, this accelerator. So it is a much more structured and, and I would also say a much higher quality of uh, approaching a customer than when you do it directly. And of course, the sales cycle is much shorter uh, in an accelerator program. The clients are already on it. And they don't have to be sold to. They're already looking for some, some sort of a solution on that problem statement. So so you, you spoke about your entrepreneurial journey and there are a lot of young entrepreneurs that would be listening to this episode of ours. So what would be your suggestion to them when they're starting up? Uh, what am I suggesting to the young entrepreneurs? <laughs> I mean... Um... 
honestly, I think the best is do it for a reason that, do it for really an, an intrinsic reason. Don't try to do it just for money. Don't try to do it just for fame. That's all cool and everything is nice about that. But as I said before, if you really want to go through the hardest and toughest time, you need to want it intrinsically. You don't need to want it just for money or for a, for a reward. You need to want it because you, you, that's what fulfills you and that's your mission in your life. So I would say that's one of the most important thing. And, and then and then honestly, always be open. Uh, it's like it's a bit it's a bit the same thing. You, you really have to be open for every option. You have to be willing to to test and to to fail if needed because a test can go can be positive and it can be negative. And to to be happy in both cases, because if you succeeded, that means you're one one step more near at your goal. But if you failed, you learned a lot. So you you know what you don't have to do the next time or you you know how to do it better. So I think that is something that when I talk with different entrepreneurs, they want to do everything right from the beginning. And that's like, of course, yeah, we all want to do everything right from the beginning. But you have to have the mentality that, okay, it's it's okay if in the meantime, a few things don't work out as, as they should, I will learn from that. And my business will actually develop uh, on, on, on top of that. So I would really say, say do, it in, do it for an intrinsic reason, be open and, uh, and really learn every day. Learn every day by succeeding and by failing. So being open to making mistakes is very good, but it's always good to not make mistakes or you know make lesser mistakes and mitigate the risk. So what would you say would be a low risk strategy in terms of entering a new market from your experience? So what can an entrepreneur do when they're entering a new market to sort of control the risk they have yeah. while doing so? I mean, it's basically, um, uh, if you want, it's splitting up the the process of how you're offering um, or how you imagine to offer your product to a customer. Um, if, if you build your product before you actually talk to the customer, you invest a huge amount of, of money and time into a product that didn't, that where you don't have yet customer feedback. So there you're in making a huge risk and you don't have yet the information. So I would say be always data driven, meaning that what hypothesis do you have now? How do you want to basically test that hypothesis and what data do you need? And that's a step-by-step process. So a product doesn't need to be built from today to tomorrow to be offered to customers. I see some people that just do landing pages, very simple landing pages. They just ask questions or they may just service with a few customers just to understand, do you think my my product makes sense? Do you think, would you buy it? If yes, for how much would you buy it? So getting all that data before you actually start building, it's crucial. Because a lot of people invest a lot of time and money into building before they actually get the data. And that's very risky because yeah you could hit the right the right need but it could also be that you just don't hit anything and then your product is not important for customers because you didn't listen enough at the beginning so i would say if you want to start and then be low risk start with listening to customers and, and gathering a lot of data that's a great advice uh, listening to your customers so you also spoke to a lot of clients through uh, in the scale up to program and you had the you had the opportunity to understand the requirements you, you had the opportunity to understand the landscape so for your business what is the potential in terms of transforming the consumer spending in UAE in this particular ecosystem for Kiwi as a whole? What do you see? I mean, it's uh, it's huge. There are, um, for us, there are really a few very big partners um, and players in the UAE that uh, that are huge in the loyalty market. So we see that through the connection that we did also now with the scale-up um, uh, accelerator uh, with Altar and MAF, it was, um, it's like, again, two additional players that cover the whole market that have a huge influence and impact in the market. So also for us, that means having, again, two top partners on board that actually attract even more, um, even more partners there. And our goal is for sure to expand our... Um, let's say our uh, our partnerships in the UAE and also um uh, as we said also our team because um we see it as a very high high potential market and want to focus more resources on it okay and now now that we see the market is really evolving in terms of web 3.0 what what is the what are the solutions that you're most passionate about passionate about in terms of you know let's say next five years in the future having the most potential um i mean if you look at web3 so for us it's uh, everything uh, everything that is going basically in direction metaverse um uh, topic nfts and, uh, and and tokenization in general of the of, of assets um those three topics will be core for the future and they all they all are 
let's say connected together because at the end of the day metaverse is just for example the at the end of the day the, the visual summary of all this digital um let's say resources that we're building uh, it's basically the place where you actually see um let's say the internet the new internet and so those are the applications that that we're super excited about that we're really looking at looking and observing and, and also testing with different in different ways um very nearly because we see that there is a huge amount of potential um as always when technologies are being hyped there is a lot of potential but there is a lot of stuff that uh, doesn't make sense so you always have to filter a bit and you have to understand what you actually want to focus on but um at the end of the day for the loyalty market all these three um let's say applications of web3 will have a huge impact um uh, be it the metaverse being nfts and then how we're seeing it already now tokenizing points miles stars etc stamps it makes absolutely sense. Uh, it, it's it's a no brainer, and the whole loyalty market will uh, sooner than later wake up and understand. Ah, actually, yeah, we have to go into that direction. And from there on, it will be very fast. It will be very fast into NFTs, into metaverse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it takes for sure another three to five years. Yeah, I think they connect really well to KB score. And uh, uh, so, so in terms of future, you know, next uh, one year, what are the most ambitious goals for KB? So we want to, I mean, we want to onboard uh, as many brands as possible. We want to um, expand our ecosystem. Um, and there are different markets that uh, that we're entering right now uh, with new brands. We will be focused a lot on the US, but of course, still push Europe. And, and as we said, uh, UAE is, uh, is more and more important for us and, and will be in focus. Um, but the goal is really to bring as many brands as possible on board, to expand our marketplace and, and to deliver the value that, uh, that, we're, uh, that we're promising. So... That's what we're fully focused on, and the growth is always uh, as uh, is as always very very ambitious because uh, we need to grow fast. So uh, we want to move forward, and uh, uh, let's see how many how many brands we can get on board until end of the year. Okay, all the best. I really we really look forward to witnessing your journey and growth. Thanks. Um, so thank much. you so much, Gabriel, for taking the time today. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and it was a pleasure working with you during the program. Same here, same here. Thank you very much for the opportunity have a, have a great and, uh, and the time. Thank you, B. Thank you.